Okay, so here's one of my firewood racks. I made these out of red oak also. Um, very sturdy. Uh, I mean, I can drop these on the truck, flip them over into the truck once they're loaded. Um, grab them in the forks, pick them up, flip them around. I mean, they, they're very sturdy. They're not like uh, some softwood pallet, even some of these hardwood pallets they make. I mean, this thing is, I mean, this thing is solid. Um, it's really what you need. Um, I used these all last year. I got two of them I made. Uh, hold up very well. So anyway, I made them to stack out each of them a face cord. Uh, they can get two rows, each row four feet tall, four feet wide. So if it was one face cord stacked out in somebody's, say someone stacks out in their garage, it's going to be four feet tall, eight feet long, one row. What I'm stacking out today is a half cord. So it will be one full rack plus another half rack. And that will be a half of a full cord. Um, and I'm going to see how long that takes. So I'll set you up and we'll see how long it takes. And then I'll demonstrate picking them up with the Bobcat and how they get loaded in the truck. All right, let's get after it. All right, so I'm gonna set a timer and I'm gonna see in time how long it takes me to stack half of a full cord on these racks. So there we go, just started. I'm gonna try and just stack continuously, no break. So we can get a pretty good idea of time. Time it takes. The other thing about stacking and accurate measurement, straight across. If you're accurately trying to measure out a face cord, a full cord, all the pieces are going the same direction. No crisscross stacking. That's cheating in terms of accurate amount. If you want to stack it for yourself and for air drying purposes, it's better. If you stacked out, say, a couple cords over a few pallets and you you change the direction 90 degrees every direction every layer that's good that'll uh, dry quicker there's more space in there more space though when you're trying to sell it means the customers getting less wood no crisscross stacking you get less wood the customer gets less wood So any little bits and pieces I can, I don't have to take with me. I can uh, sift them out.
And in stacking, I'm trying to stack out as tightly as possible. I'm trying to be methodical, not be haphazard about it. Um, you want the customer, if they actually want to test you, if they actually stack it out, you want them, when, the, when they have their stack stacked out, to say, hey, I actually got more than they told me. That's a returning customer. Customers will pay for that. They'll pay for a premium product. That's the market I want to be in. Some guys, they want to be in the volume game where they just they're just they just want to do a lot of wood quality isn't maybe there but it's a decent price you know I'm not geared toward selling to the person that needs four cords to heat their home these are the people that might burn a half to a full cord as supplemental heat throughout the season that's my market. And not just the dry product, but the species of wood that you're selling where we are here in upstate New York. A lot of the good hardwoods are gonna be your maples, hard maple, sugar maple, uh, ash, oak, a lot of red oak, some white oak, um, maybe some elm, uh, locust, hickory, Now, some guys could even say, here's another example of parsing words. There's no softwood, so no pine, spruce, fir. But what if they put in something like willow or basswood, cottonwood, technically hardwoods, but soft hardwoods that you don't want burning in your indoor fireplace or wood stove. So. If you sell a, a good product, it's good to inform your customer of those things. Most guys might just say, I sell firewood. You ask them, what kind of wood? It's wood. <laughs> I'll show you the, uh, the accumulation of smaller stuff that it's good kindling, but a customer isn't gonna want a, a half a weir barrel, weir barrel full of this stuff in their driveway when they're buying, you know, a face quarter or a half quarter of wood. And when you stack your racks out, like well, what I do, I uh, first of all, it's accurate measurement. I know the dimensions, but stack them a little, a little heavy, topple them up a little bit so that there's no way they can dispute they didn't get what they ordered. If anything, if they stack it out, they'll say, "Hey, I got more than what I paid for." Let me move you. The other side. So for a half quart, it's going to be one full rack plus a half a half a half a rack like like I just did. So I got to do that times two over here. I got to do it's going to be that plus this full rack, two rows, and that'll be a half a quart. So it's all about keeping the touches down. See like that, I can, 
Take that. Customer doesn't have to get that junk. Keeping the touches down. Most of this wood, this is the first time I've laid hands on it. If it, would, if it went through the firewood processor, it went through a machine loaded the firewood processor. And then it came out the other end, conveyed right into this bin. And this is the first time I'm touching it with my hands. And then from here, onto the dump truck, the skid steer bobcat will take this dump it on the truck the delivery truck and it's a dump truck I can dump it right off so I can get it too again not everybody has all these this type of equipment but this this is many years of many many years of just trying to make the workflow of doing firewood more efficient It's an off-season thing for me. But I can stand right here in place. I don't gotta I don't gotta walk five paces, walk back. I can pretty much set the rack where I need it and just swivel, pivot swivel. So right now we are about 12, 12 minutes so far. You know, like for instance, these these racks right here, I made them, but I used to just use uh, a, a good a good decent hardwood pallet before I made these for use with the machine, and I just kind of made the old, the uh, the frame around the outside with some scrap lumber I had. You know, I know a lot of guys they like the IBC totes. I think those are excellent if you're burning for yourself. You could split the wood, put it in the, in the tote, wet, uh, season it, and if you got a loader, tractor, skid steer, you can go grab it and then stick it on your front porch with the machine or you know, right on your deck where you can just go right from the tote to inside. But if you got to take it out of that tote again and it's not going right to where you're going to burn it or you're going to take that out and then load your delivery vehicle. Unless you're to each their own. For instance, if somebody stacks up uh, under a woodshed, they stack it up to dry it. Is it going to dry quicker? Yeah. Than this? Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to play that middle ground of how can I efficiently one guy do, I don't know, 20 cores a year. Um, would definitely like to ramp that up with the with the firewood the firewood processor. I mean that thing by myself I can do um, a full cord like an hour and 15 minutes, and that's with loading the live deck. That's from like a 10 to 12 foot log to split and in this bin in about an hour and 15 minutes and that includes the time of moving the logs from the pile to putting them on the, the log deck on the 
processor. That's a, uh, that'll be coming. There'll be a video on that soon. So I'll set that up and that'll fill the rest of this bin. Touches down. That's not just a. If you're gonna sell it to make more money, that's a. If you burn firewood, why do you want to deal with it more than you need to? Why do you want to touch it more than you need to? You know, I'm all about finding processes to make things more efficient. Whether it be different techniques. Uh, innovative equipment. There's all sorts of equipment on the market today to speed things up and keep labor down. Keep labor costs down. If you're a, a you know, you've got a small business, you're already utilizing pick up you got a dump trailer maybe a dump truck uh, tractor with a bucket you probably already got some equipment to speed up the speed up the process or make things a little more efficient for yourself sides on this bin are open and then the tarp I don't usually tarp it until a solid four to six weeks before the snow starts flying especially in the summertime if I can get that, that summer sun to just bake that wood on top um, but yeah going into winter if this is one of them live and learn kind of things um, you think, okay, I I got the most premium seasoned firewood. 30 months. I tested with my moisture meter. It's 12%, 14%, which is definitely, it's doable. It's doable. I've got some red oak over there that's been seasoned and covered for probably four years, and it's definitely in that realm. Uh, but if you got something that's been split, even if it was covered out of the weather, and then all of a sudden that that wood, it's uh, say it's stacked just randomly in a, in a random stack like this, not stacked up. If it if it's out in the the snow, colder temperatures, December, January, February, it gets rained on, snowed on. That customer isn't going to be able to burn that. <laughs> I've been there. Just really good premium firewood and got snowed on. And even though the inside was dry, the external, it was just, it soaked up a good bit of water where they, uh, they couldn't get it dry. Um, that's when I started realizing if you're going to sell in the winter, you got to be able to cover it somehow. Um, you know, I don't have large wood sheds. I mean, that would be the next thing to have some, if it, for a bigger structure with an overhead, more permanent canopy. Um, but again, this is, this entire bin, the wood I had, I was able to mill it myself. I bought the live step stock fence and one 20 to 22 ton load of crush number twos sitting on a geotextile fabric. So, I mean, the whole bin probably cost me five to 600 bucks to do it, you know? And then 
I got two tarps, two heavy duty tarps that cost money, but they're gonna get cycled season after season. I'm two seasons into it with these heavy duty tarps. Uh, you know, something under a thousand dollars to be able to store 20 cords of dry firewood. If the bin's full, that's pretty good. thinking outside the box. So almost almost full. Almost there. give them good hardwood that's dry a reasonable size some small some mediums not some not too large these are people that are going to be burning for ambiance typically not for heating their home they don't need boiler wood um, then you're going to have repeat customers This gentleman probably bought three half cord loads for me last year. The price went up uh, for that quantity thirty dollars, thirty dollars more than was last year, because of some of my increased costs. And it was okay when you can get here. Because most people have been burned with buying firewood. Not getting good quantity, the right quantity. Uh, junky wood, not dry. Even just shady characters that you deal with. Just about full here. I'm gonna load it on, show you how that goes. I would imagine these racks, each rack being they are the probably weight-wise. I'd say weight-wise, they're probably around. Probably 12 to 1500 pounds. It depends on the species of wood. Somewhere in there. Probably closer to 1200. Well, yeah, probably about 12, 12 to 1400 pounds. And that's no issue for that machine. But um, some guys get so narrow minded that all they can think is everybody sells firewood by a face cord, which again, that, that's a one third of a full cord. So a face cord or a full cord. Well, why do you guys sell at those quantities? I sell at half a cord typically. The customer gets 50% more out of a, out of instead of making three trips for for a full cord on doing face cords, I can make two trips um, and still make a good profit margin. And they like it because they're uh, quantity wise, they're saving because they're buying more up front. Some guys do bundles. Just with a see I don't got I don't got anything. I don't have I don't even have a license. Okay. 
do you have uh, access to some firewood? Are there tree guys willing to sell you some or just dump it off if they're in your area? Um, do you have a log splitter? Can you rent a log splitter? Can you swing an ax? Can you swing a maul? Um, you know, a, a, a maul and a sledge. Because um, a road stand could work pretty good in that situation where you can't where you can't go anywhere. Selling small little bundles. Um, there's some local stores around here. They'll get for it's probably not even one cubic foot. It's probably 0.75, and they're probably getting around eight dollars for that. I mean, if you sold for five or six, and you're just as good quality, you shouldn't have any issue. Firewood is just one of them things where it's so simple, straightforward, not complicated. It's not complicated. Um, that, you know, anybody could do it to make a few extra bucks if they needed. Okay, not anybody, not everybody. There's some exceptions. You know what I mean? How much do you get? How much do you get? How much do you get? That's the next question. How come he hasn't talked about price? Gotta look at your market, where you are. Get on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and different local places, farmers markets you can sell at, or, um, places you can advertise for free. What's it going for? Okay. I, I, I do that and then I say, okay, that's not my standard. Um, because I know a lot of the fly-by-nights that might post stuff on there. Um, you know, there's guys that are that are going to sell good quality products too. I get that. Um, that's just a good baseline. Uh, you can see guys selling full cords for under two hundred dollars in my area. I know what you're going to get for that, or closer to four hundred dollars with delivery. And I bet you there's going to be a big difference in the quality of wood and what you're getting. So how much? Well, examine your market. The market in your area will tell you a lot. I think most places, um, again, if you're in the south, there's probably not a huge market in the southern United States for, for firewood, for burning kind of like this, for uh, ambiance. Um, and some of these people, they will supplement heating in the wintertime with, uh, you know, buying, buying wood in, in these kind of quantities. And I've sold larger quantities too. Um, people that'll only need maybe a few, few core to really heat most of their home. So I know up here you can be, it, it can vary. Again, you can't even put a number on it. I mean, just because there's so many factors of what you're going to get. You get a couple guys that seem seemingly low, but you, you know, there might be a reason for that. I hear many horror stories of just getting junk wood cut, cut to like 10, 11 inches in length. Um, just what some guys will do with firewood processors, they'll take a, a log that's been on, you know, cut for a few years and they'll, they'll process that right into the truck and they'll call that seasoned. Well, you get a 12 to 16 inch log that's been cut down only for uh, a few years. It's still gonna have, like say it's a red oak, it's gonna be 30, 40% still moisture content. Good dry firewood needs to be 20% or under. So let's see what we did on time. Even with that extra talking, we are under 30 minutes, just under 30 minutes, 29, just about 30 minutes. And uh, that's about right, because, you know, you can't do that all day long. You could. I couldn't. It's too monotonous for me. Um, but be able to 
knock it out in 30 minutes, taking your time with the racks nice and close like that to where you're stacking. Uh, that's not bad. So from there, it'll go get loaded with the machine, dumped right on the truck, ready to go. I'll show you.